All right, welcome back to the PyCSE channel. Um, last time I talked about doing optimization with the minimize function, and today we are going to uh, try out a couple of new versions with optimization that allow us to include constraints. So constraint optimization comes up when you want to minimize a function, but you need your solution to obey certain constraints. So here, here's an example in this, in this little graphic here, where you have um, $120 in your wallet, and you can buy bananas and apples. And the amount of enjoyment you get from bananas and apples is related to the square root of this product of the number of bananas and the number of apples. And so what we would like to do is maximize the amount of enjoyment we have by buying uh, these. Uh, but you can see that they cost different amounts. So uh, we can't buy all bananas uh, or we won't have any enjoyment because we really like to have apples. And um, we only have $120 to spend. So the goal here would be like, how do we find the number of bananas and the number of apples that maximize our enjoyment? And that might seem uh, strange since I said we're going to talk about constrained minimization. But a, a common trick in minimization is that instead of minimizing uh, the function, if we want to maximize it, we just minimize the negative of a function. So minimize is uh, the same as we did before. We need to define an objective function that we're trying to, uh, to minimize. And so let's uh, first let's import uh, the things that we're going to need. Um, and then we'll look at what we're trying to do. So we're trying to maximize the square root of number of bananas and number of apples. So I often uh, usually just call my functions objective and I also usually just give uh, a variable x, but you can name it anything you want. And let's say that the uh, number of bananas is the first argument and number of apples is second. All right, I, usually I'll unpack the array that we're trying to solve for here in variables that make sense. And then um, enjoyment is going to be, uh, let's define that, enjoyment equals np dot square root of nb times na. All right, and we want to maximize that, so we're going to return minus enjoyment. All right, that is our function um, that we're trying to uh, minimize in this case. Now we have to define the uh, inequality uh, function. So the way, the way you handle constraints and minimize is we're going to give an extra argument called constraints and that constraints argument will be a dictionary that defines uh, the, uh, the constraints. I'll get to that in, in a moment. So let's define um, an equality function. It takes the same arguments as x and what we want here for an equality is a function that's equal to zero at the solution. So if, if the number of bananas times the price of bananas plus the number of apples times the price of apples is equal to 120, we would have our solution. So let's return 120 minus the number of, of bananas times the price of bananas, which is two, and minus the number of apples times the price of apples, uh, which is given as four. All right, so our constraint will be satisfied if, uh, if this returns zero, and let's also return, uh, unpack this right here, okay? So um, what we're trying to do is, again, minimize this objective by varying uh, x, which is going to be an array of the number of bananas and the number of apples. We'll have this constraint function that we use that's our, our next problem there. Let's uh, get it get it gone for a minute. And uh, now all we do is call minimize on our objective. Um, as before, we need a guess. Um, let's just guess one apple and one banana. And we have to add the constraints. And what we're going to uh, do is make this a dictionary. And I'm going to use this function. Um, form, we're going to say we have a type of equality and the function is equal to eq1. All right, there's a couple of other ways. I'll show you one more way we could do it um, like this. But when you run this, uh, you get to the output here. 
this gives us uh, the uh, solution that we should purchase 29 bananas or 30 bananas and 15 apples. And I'm going to leave out uh, the subtle detail of whether these should be integers or not. Uh, let's assume this is like 30 pounds of bananas and 15 pounds of apples and that you can uh, achieve that. So uh, let's check a few things first that, uh, that are in here. So let me save the solution here. And these are things that, um, that you should regularly think about checking. So solution.x is um, what we had. Let's check our, in our equality. Equality one of solution.x. And this should be something that's very close to zero. And in fact, that is what we see. So the equality constraint is satisfied. And as far as the solver knows, it uh, terminated successfully. And an interesting point here, last time I said the Jacobian of a minimize would be, you know, basically zero everywhere. That's not true in this constrained case because um, we're not finding a minimum based on f prime is equal to zero. We're finding a minimum that satisfies uh, the minimum value that satisfies the constraint. Uh, let's see, what else could we look at here? Um, the function value here is minus 21.2, so that tells us that your, your overall happiness is the negative of this, so positive 21.2. And in principle, any other value of, of these should give you less, uh, less satisfaction. So we probably can't go higher in many of these without spending too much money. Um, but if you were to go lower in any of these, you would get uh, less, less satisfaction. So let's see if that's the case. So objective of 30 comma 15 is the solution that we got. Um, let's do minus so that you can see the, the maximum. If I make this um, 29, well, we have had less, less bananas, so we'll be less happy. And if we make this 14, um, of course, we have less apples, so we should be less happy. So that's kind of a qualitative way of showing that the solution is, uh, is not going to be any better um, without violating the constraint that is you run out of money. Um, all right, I wanted to show you one other way uh, to, to write this solution and give you some insight into why I chose uh, that particular form. So the constraint has to be a dictionary, and I used the dictionary function to uh, to create this. So um, it's not super common to see, maybe, but this just returns uh, returns a dictionary. Let's see if that looks more more reasonable. Nope. Uh, also, nope. Okay. Um, this is uh, some, some feature of the way Emacs Jupyter is, is outputting uh, the dictionary. Um, basically, this just creates, uh, it creates a dictionary and you can see uh, what's in here. So if you wanted to write out the dictionary longhand, we certainly can. We just have to use all the colons and everything should be quoted. This is a um, equivalent form, and then we don't need that. So this gives me the same result. Um, it's just I had to manually type out um, this. And the syntax up here avoids a couple of the quotes, and it avoids the colon. So yeah, it's just like a little bit easier to type sometimes. All right, let's um, talk very briefly uh, about an inequality constraint. So I just showed you an optimization with an equality constraint where you say the here's a condition where the some function of the variables has to equal something. We may want an inequality constraint where we could say um, that something is at least something or greater than something. So this is a different uh, example and that we have uh, say a labor cost and a capital cost. And the output of your of some process is equal to the square root of labor times capital. 
this, this is just a made up function, um, but it doesn't really change what we're trying to do. Um, what we would like to do is find the minimum cost to get an output of at least 100. So here we have this output function that tells us um, we have to have some labor, we have to have some capital. Our goal is to get at least 100, and these things cost different amounts. And so we, we can't go all labor because then capital will be zero and that's not going to be good. Um, and we can't go all capital. And the goal is what's the right balance of labor and capital to get at least 100 outputs and at the minimum cost. All right, so this is an inequality constraint because uh, we have an output of at least 100. So we're still going to have to define um, functions. So let's, let's work out our objective function first. The objective function is to uh, find the minimum cost to get an output. So the cost will be the amount of labor plus the amount of capital. So let's uh, go ahead and make another x. And now let's say um, L comma C is equal to x. And we're going to return 9 times the labor plus 3 times the capital. All right, that's the total cost. The number of L's times the cost per L and the number of C's times the cost per C. That's the thing that we want to minimize. Then let's define an inequality function. And again, L comma C is equal to X. And the, the key point to remember in these inequality functions is that you want to define a function that is greater than or equal to zero. So we need to see something that is at least 100. That is, we want uh, np dot square root of L times C is greater than or equal to 100. OK? But we have to write our, our inequality function in the way that it is greater than or equal to 0. So we just subtract 100 from each side. And then we will return that np dot square root of L times C minus 100 will be greater than or equal to zero at our solution of L comma C. All right, and now finally we just uh, run minimize again, minimize objective, and let's make a guess of one and one again, and then we're going to add our constraints and I'm going to use the dictionary again. This time we're going to say the type is inequality. There's two types, equality and inequality. And the function is equal to uh, inequality one. All right. And if we run that, we get uh, to the solution that we should have 57.7 labors and 173.2 capitals. And that will give us the lowest cost of 1,039. That also generates um, at least 100 units. How many units? Uh, let's see. Let's look at inequality one of sol dot x. All right, so that uh, sol dot x. That gives us a result that's basically equal to zero, which says that at this cost we make exactly 100 units, and that is that was our, our constraint. We had to make at least 100, and it turns out that is what we make. All right, again, I don't want to uh, concentrate too much on whether these should be integers. It turns out integer optimization is a lot trickier and isn't something that's easy to do out of the box with scipy.minimize. This is uh, much more suitable for uh, continuous variables that, um, that you could use. And then you would have to, if you want integers, you would have to manually round these up or down and decide what the best one is uh, in this case. All right, so that is it for constraint minimization today. There are a lot of other options you can use. You can have more than one constraint. In that case, you just pass a list of constraint dictionaries. And there are some uh, special cases for special solvers. The goal today was is really just how to take a simple problem that has constraints 
equality or inequality and uh, write a function that is the objective, another function that codes the constraint, and then you specify whether it's equality or inequality, and that means it's either equal to zero in the equality case or greater than or equal to zero in the inequality case. All right, that's it. Uh, thanks for, for coming, and I uh, will see you next time.